Okay, good evening everybody, welcome. Um, we're gonna call the annual meeting to order on time at 6 p.m. So I wanna introduce myself, my name's Tracy Lunzer. I'm the president of um, the Bacchus Board of Directors. And again, just extend um, on behalf of the board and Bacchus to welcome you here and sharing on recapping for the year. Um, so we will just move ahead. So, calling to order. Um, first off, we want to introduce everybody, get to know everybody in the room. Um, we'll start with, did you want to start with staff? I can start with okay. staff. Can do that. Hello everyone, my name is Lois Lundin. I'm the director here at Bacchus, and it's my pleasure to introduce the Bacchus staff to you. Um, Wah Sobaczynski is here. Wah is our um, business manager. And Darcy Sullivan is back behind, and she <laughs> is our program director at um, for KCC TV. And Alyssa Crawford is here. Hi, Alyssa. Alyssa is our office assistant. Um, she's she's the better part of what keeps all of us in order, doesn't she? <laughs> yes. um, we do have other staff here at Bacchus who are not here tonight. We have um, Rebecca Wright, Leonard Bobst. Carly Carlson, Brenda Bounds, and June Wilson. They're all in the kitchen tonight. We have Community Cafe happening. So they are all here. And Joe Kennedy is our, Kenny, is our janitor, and he has gone home for the day, but he helps to maintain our building. Okay. Um, then we will move on to introducing the board members and then the Bacchus membership that's here as well. So I'll lead off for the board members again. I'm Tracy Lunzer. Welcome. We'll grab a seat. So why don't we start with the board members? We'll just start in the front row, and if you could stand up and introduce yourself to the room, and then we'll move on to the membership as well. So, Tim Fairchild. Jim Lyman. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Yeah, Mike Levin was my first meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve Costa. Yeah, back Tom Smith. <laughs> Julie Markelsey. Patty Bologna. Sherry Lusari. And Donna. Oh. And Donna. <laughs> we have Donna here all the way from Florida where it is much warmer, um, but we'll get yeah. there soon. So, um, and then we'll move on to any um, membership that wants to introduce yourself. If you don't feel comfortable, just say pass. If you want to stand up, please do. If you don't, no worries. Um, so we'll kind of start at the front and work our way back to. I'm Greg Blundine, uh, the other half to that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Carol Jim. Hi, I'm Jim Young. I'm the chair of the Borealis Parks. Awesome. Joe Belange, uh, director of the Rainy Lake Community Orchestra. Carol Johnson. Awesome. Marva Fairchild. Carol Belange. Ed Magnuson. Connie Magnuson. Alan Bertrell. Ann Holden. Jeff McCarth. Amy McCarth. And Barb Smith. Welcome. Did Welcome, we miss everybody. anyone? I, we made it to the back, but nobody feels. Yes. All right. Well, welcome. Um, we'll just move on down. Um, the next item is to approve our minutes from the 2021 annual meeting. So they are in the packet here on pages four and five. And so we would just need a motion from anybody here today if they've reviewed it and want to approve them. We'll take a motion for that right now. Move to approve. Okay. By Sherry. And then we need a second. Second. Who's that? Bar Smith. Bar Smith, okay. Um, so all in favor of approving the minutes from the 2021 meeting, state aye. 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 All in favor, or all opposed, same sign. All right, that motion carries. Okay, so then moving on, um, we have some spots to nominate and fill on the board, and so you got we all get to participate in that tonight. Um, so first, I guess would we go through the ones that we have on the ballot already established are Tim Fairchild, um, Tom Smith, 
and then Sue Nordquist. And another thing that we want to do tonight is accept any nominations from members from the floor. Just to make sure if anybody had come with anybody that they wanted to introduce to the board. And then to make sure everybody feels heard, I have to offer it a second time. Any nominations from the floor for our open board of directors position? <coughs> and going again, any nominations from the floor for the open position to, to vote on? So then hearing none, we have just the three. Um, so then we will vote, I think just by, just by vocal. Um, so we'll need a motion to approve the three on the ballot for the board of directors, Tim Fairchild, Tom Smith, and Sue Nordquist. Do we have a motion for that? Uh -oh. Okay, we have Julie. And then a second? I'll second. I'll second. Here. You guys got that? Okay. I think I think Mike was up. I saw his hand first. Okay. 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 Um, so then, all in favor of the three that we have to fill the open board positions, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. All right. And that motion carries. So congratulations to our continuing members and um, our new member, Sue Nordquist. So then, the next part is just reviewing all of our reports from the year, um, and we will start with the AV project update on page seven of your booklet, and we'll have Lois take over. I asked, um, I asked Isaac Meyer to provide some information. There has been a lot of activity that's been happening over at the AV school as they get ready to begin construction. They're announcing or they're, they're communicating out to their investors at this point that they expect that the close of the sale for AV will be in early May. And that is our hope too. Once that sale is complete, then construction will begin. They have the first things that they need to work on already outlined. They've been taking preparation steps just to uh, make sure that they are completing all of their paperwork with the National Park Service and with other, um, with other organizations that they need to make sure they have all their I's dotted and their T's crossed. Um, they have done some, the Platt subdivision was recently completed and approved by the City of International Falls um, and they are going through and completing all of their environmental assessments and evaluations to make sure that they're ready to move forward. Um, we're just really looking forward to the, to the close of this. We've been working on it a lot of people have been working on it longer than I have, but people are excited to see things get started and get underway. And the um, AB partnership is very engaged in making this happen. I'll let you read the rest of the Alexander Baker School update from Isaac. There are some two really um, interesting pictures at the top of the page that they had a photographer take. One is very recent of the exterior of the building and one is of the main uh, staircase in the building. One thing I want to share with, with the group about the Alexander Baker, when we do start construction, plans are still underway that we'll be able to take KCC TV in the building quite frequently so that we can record progress in what is happening and, and um, put that out for the public to see so that people can stay engaged and know what's happening for construction in the building. Any questions on AB? <coughs> Alan. Open staircase, is that uh, uh, kosher nowadays because people like to fall <laughs> over them? I'm not kidding you. I yeah. mean, uh, you read about it all the time. They get thrown over or they fall over. It just, whatever way they hit hard. You know what, that's not a question that I have an answer to, Alan. I'll find out for you so that I can tell you. Um, I know that they are going through all the codes and everything that they have to do for safety and for building security, but I will ask the question and I'll get an answer for you. you know, it's not for me, it's just that something to look for. Yeah. People like me that like to fall them off. <laughs> I'll put cushions down there, I'd like so. to host a wedding there. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful building. It really is. And the plans include an elevator? The plan, the plan does an include elevator. an elevator, yes. Yes. 
There are, um, I think he listed how many, or no, he didn't in this part. The next month's newsletter, Alyssa had a great idea, we're going to pursue it. Our next month's newsletter in March is going to be dedicated to information about the Alexander Baker building, and it will talk about how many of each kind of apartment there will be, what is affordable housing, who's going to own the building. All those questions that people ask will be in next month's newsletter. Okay, we'll move on to the next section, which is, again, Lois, um, going over her executive director report on pages eight and nine. The executive director's report, once again, is broken out by quarter so that you can see the highlights that I reported to the board each quarter. Um, and there are several items in here, and a lot of it, um, there isn't anything, I don't think, over the top uh, remarkable in here. It's all remarkable to us. Um, it, Bacchus is a very busy place, so I would encourage you to read through these items as you have time um, to see what kinds of things we did over the course of the year. Um, something that I do want to highlight again is the partnership that we share with the Alexander Baker partnership team and all the work that we have done with them. There's a lot that happens that not everybody gets to see right now or, or may ever see, but um, you know, I remember when I came here, I thought, oh, the AB building will be sold and that we can hand them the keys. There's a lot more to it than that. <laughs> so it's been a great educational process for all of us and a great thing to be involved in. Um, 2022 also brought some new tenants to the Bacchus building. We did have a, a couple move out um, and, and Northland Counseling is making preparations to leave Bacchus and go move over to their new building, which is far better suited for the needs of our community. But we do have some new tenants in our building. The Rainy River Rugrats are here. They have a number of rooms and spaces available and they are caring for a lot of kids. It's wonderful to hear the chatter and the noise of the little kids in our building every day. The Oberholzer Foundation is establishing a space up on the second floor and they will be building like a library type environment where they will have books, artwork, and other artifacts. And the public can go mainland and learn about the Oberholzer Foundation and what is happening up at the island. So that's a great opportunity for us. There's also discussion with the Oberholzer Group about having some writers workshops and other artistic things available for our community. There are a number of students who have graduated beyond the writing camp that happens at Camp Atsakan, and they're looking at offering something for young adults and adults who want to write. The Kuchiching County veterans had a soft opening of their space yesterday, and it was wonderful. There were, they had a full house for their entire, for their entire um, open house, and a lot of people were here. We had a lot of positive comments. They're calling it the Veterans Lounge, and it's a place where veterans can come into the community and they can, um, they can be up here at Bacchus, they can play cards, they can learn, they can watch football, they can just have time together. Um, Bacchus offers a non-alcoholic um, environment, so it's just, it's a nice, safe, secure, open place for them to come, and there are a lot of things happening in Bacchus that they can participate in. So it's, we're very happy to welcome all of these folks to our community. Any questions? Okay, moving on, we'll invite Tom to come up and go over um, some very exciting stuff. The treasurer's report it is exciting to some. I should not make light of it, but it is mostly over my head. So we'll hand it to thank Tom. Thank you so much, Tracy. I've done a lot of work to get the report down to two hours, and we'll have a bathroom break after an hour. So, Tracy, keep yeah, I'll time start. Yep, yep, down. I'm okay. on it. Uh, the the, the report document that we have uh, shows uh, a condensed version of our financials and I should call your attention to page 10 where we basically show our, our income at $735,698 and our expense line of $717,487 uh, which leaves a net of $18,211. Uh, we should note that the expense line shows a, a non-cash depreciation expense of $63,000. You'll see that through the report and stuff. The next area is our sources of income, which is down below our government sources and our grants. And uh, we've broken that down so that you can review that for yourself. And uh, 
you can see that uh, you know we get a lot of support from government entities here in town, the county, and then grants that uh, uh, Lois does a good job of filling out grant forms and making sure we're not poor. Uh, the government support is, accounts for 12% of our revenue line and the grants account for 13% of our revenue line. So the rest of the support comes from the community and folks like the people in this room. And that is on, uh, for revenue, it's on 14 and 12, page 14 and page 12. And you can review those at your leisure and you'll be able to see you know, where the dollars come from and uh, where they're going and such. And then on the expense side, pages 15 and 13 show more details of our expense uh, line items and such, which uh, you can see the detail. If you have questions, uh, Wa would be happy to answer them <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, that's where I have to go and you have to go there too. Uh, so with that, does anyone have any questions or anything on the financials? We're doing fine. Uh, the, revenue, the revenue exceeds expenses and uh, we expect that to continue throughout the year, throughout this year. Okay, looks like we're going to miss the two-hour break. I'm, I think we'll be okay. Okay, I just, I just want everyone happy. Do we get a one-minute break? <laughs> you. You. Everyone else. Okay. All right, thank you, Tom. Um, so then the next section of the booklet that I want to call your attention to is the building use by numbers and the back as volunteers. Um, Read it over at your leisure. You may know some people, you may know some of the programs that are here. Um, these are really just the statistics that show what happens at Bacchus. And it shows the variety, which I think is really exciting. Um, we have stuff from things for children, from dance to sports to Boy Scouts. And then we have things for adults to dinners and music classes and um, just a lot of stuff. So look over. <laughs> Look over these pages. Um, does anybody have any questions about these sections? Anything that sticks out to you that you're excited about or that you want to see more of? Anything like that? Okay. Um, next section, the Bacchus volunteers. These are the heroes of Bacchus, people that put in time freely. Um, these are people that we cannot thank enough. And so if you know any of them or see them out about, tell them thank you. Um, I know it's something we try to do all the time. So we'll just move on from there to page 20 about the endowment fund, which Tim was going to share about. Well, I'm really glad Tom didn't take his full two hours. That gives me a lot more time. <laughs> um, as you look through your annual report, you can see all the various things that Bacchus is involved with in our community and how it's been growing and adding programs. And the idea behind the endowment fund is to ensure that these programs and Bacchus are here for future generations. Um, about very close to when the, the Citizens for Bacchus and AB was formed, uh, Gordy Edisted did some paperwork on uh, a potential endowment fund. I think at that time, I wasn't here, but looking back and talking to people, I, Bacchus was more concerned about turning and keeping its lights on and, and heating the building than anything else, and things gradually built. Didn't have time and effort and money to talk about an endowment fund. In uh, 2019, uh, due to the hard work of uh, Bob Marquardt in particular, uh, a new set of bylaws uh, came up for a Bacchus Endowment Fund, and it was approved by the Board of Directors in 2019. Then Bob and Ward Merrill set out, along with the committee, to get things ready for a campaign. And thanks to Bob and Ward, we now have beautiful brochures on the endowment fund that we can send out and give to people, uh, appropriate letters, uh, pledge forms. Everything is kind of in place for an endowment fund campaign. Uh, the endowment fund also received at the very same time a very, uh, very generous kickstart from a local family, which gave us uh, some impetus to get things going. 
Um, the goal of the endowment fund that was set in 2022 was $1 million in three years. Uh, once that is achieved, 5% uh, per year can be spent for such things as outreach in the community, in the county, uh, preservation of the building, and actually any economic downturns, financial hardships that the Bacchus runs into. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of things have interfered with that. COVID being a main one, uh, all the hard work and time and effort that the development of the Alexander Baker has, building has taken. And if you've never been involved with a construction project, well, take that project and add about 15 times the difficulty, working with historic preservation, um, different tax financing, low income structures, just all kinds of different programs you have to work with. And quite frankly, with the cost of that project, uh, you know, a, a conventional type of apartment building would not be profitable. It just wouldn't be. You have to be able to pass on tax advantages. And it's very complex, takes a lot of time. And then they add to the fact that it's attached to the Bacchus. We have a common wall, we have a common heat system, we have common pipes and sewers and stuff that run that were put in 100 years ago. And we have to figure out where they're running, what's going on. So it's taken a tremendous amount of time. Um, there's also been other uh, distractions, such as flooding <laughs> and, and short staffing. So we really haven't got a strong campaign kickoff for our endowment fund, but we have everything in place now. So when we have the time and a man and woman power to get it done, we can do it. And if someone comes and inquires of anyone on the board or Lois or Law about the endowment fund, we have information, brochures, all kinds of information. So we're set up on that. Um, so uh, right now, the endowment fund, if you, if you look in the, the financials, is just a little north of $150,000. Um, you know, that's not close to our million, but we really haven't done a strong kickoff and uh, really a strong campaign yet. So after the AB project, uh, things hopefully will start returning to normal a little bit. Maybe we'll get a little bit more help on the staff. Uh, won't be so short staffed. And this will become more of a priority for us. But right now, everything is in place, ready to go. We have funds in it. Uh, when someone gives a memorial to Bacchus that's not designated for something like Community Cafe or Borealis Bards or some other program that we have, uh, it goes into the endowment fund right now. So it's gradually growing, and we look forward in the future of a, a nice campaign kickoff and find some donors that will be willing to uh, give significant contributions to the endowment. Any questions? Thank you. All right, thank you, Tim, for that. Um, moving on to the next item, summarizing the operations committee, uh, page 21, and we'll have Patty share about that. Well, um, Lois covered a lot of things about the AV project, but the Operations Committee has numerous discussions about what's going on at AB, and the major, the major start was um, the cleanup. There was a lot of stuff stored in AB that didn't need to be there. And so uh, Harry Batdorf kind of took that on, and we really appreciate all his hard work on that. He um, kind of spearheaded that. He disposed of items, he sold items, and moved items, and it's all clean and ready to go for the we anxiously await the closing. And um, the other thing was um, the AB water and sewer line. That, that's been a major part of our discussions lately. Um, where where the AB connections are going to go and how they're going to connect to the city sewer and water line. And the city's been involved. Um, Jim Lukacic, the architect, he's been involved. He's kind of helping us and um, he's been hired by the AB project managers, but he's looking out for Bacchus mm -hmm. and make sure our, our, uh, our, that we're covered and nothing will go wrong. And, 
but um, the AB project will be responsible for the installation, the cost, and the maintenance of that water line. And that one of the other big things is we started to um, work on our strategic plan. We reviewed our old ones. We've looked at what we've completed, what we what we didn't complete, what we want to complete, um, and so we are going to start up again um, towards the fall of 23 because the AB project and staff shortage has kind of hampered that. But um, it is it is on the works, and if you have any plan, if you have any ideas for things you'd like to see happen at Bacchus, please let us know. Tim's covered the endowment fund. Um, our sound and light equipment, Jeff McCarg, he's here tonight and he was helping us work on that and has great suggestions and he's worked with Darcy. So we hope to only make our sound and lighting better for, for future events. Um, Gary Hooker tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it tomorrow or Saturday? Saturday. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the, and the other thing is um, our advertising options. We're always looking at how do we get more people to attend our events at Bacchus, and and where should we advertise? Where should we spread the word? And and how to do that? And and we've changed our newsletter to be a monthly newsletter, mm -hmm. kind of short and concise, but um, it takes a little less staff time, I think, and Nancy McBride helps with that, yeah. is that correct? So, otherwise, just review the rest on your own. If you have any questions, let me know. Great, thank you, Patty. Um, the next committee that, the, <laughs> that we have here is Arts and Programming. Um, that's summarized on pages 22, and then we'll have Gail present on that. Hi, I'm Gail Ragnarud. I have the honor of being the chair of the Arts and Programming Committee. We're the ones who pick out the programs that you see here. Um, each year we go through lots of possibilities and try to pick out a good smattering of programs that, um, give, that people will like and come to see. Uh, I'd like to th thank our Performing Arts Series sponsors without them. Uh, we maybe wouldn't be able to have the quality of programming that we have with the extra money. Um, and the Arts and Programming Committee is always looking for new members, so if that's something that you think would interest you to come and help us pick out the programming, um, we would welcome you. You could come and see me or come and see Lois, and we'd be glad to have you. Um, any questions on that? Uh, the Bards? are sort of part of us, they're their own group, but um, they also bring us some really top quality entertainment. And then Joe is here, and then the Rainy River, or the Rainy Lake Community Orchestra is also uh, part of what we bring to people. Um, any questions? Thank you. All right, thank you, Gail. Um, and that's the perfect segue into the next section of our booklet, talks about the Bacchus programs. Um, and we want to invite um, Jim, if you want to share about the Bards, you can come up or share from there. Um, May as well use a mic for absolutely <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever you're comfortable with. Hi, how are you today? <laughs> um, yeah, the Boyal's Bards, well, it's been uh, quite a journey since the pandemic let us get back on stage. Um, really exciting things going on now. We have now a, a revitalized, reborn <coughs> junior Bards program. We're really excited about it. it's going to have twice a month workshops. We had our first one exactly a week ago. Very good attendance, and we expect that to grow. And you know, there's a lot of energy there. It tends to rope in the adults for future projects. Um, we also were offered the possibility of moving into the girls' locker room in the basement, um, which is a very exciting prospect. Um, there's a we've all toured it. We're all excited about the potential. Um, have some questions and some things we want to explore before we can get a decision. One of which is. What's it like in that room while basketball is happening on stage? <laughs> but it can't be worse than what's happening while dance, dancing with the is happening below us. Um, in any case, that's a really exciting opportunity, and the potential uh, recreation of the dungeon as a performance space is also something that the bards are particularly interested in for um, doing performances of another scale. 
Um, and that's kind of the main picture. We are we're still kind of growing also internally a bit. I want to be at a point where we have where we're planning a year and a half ahead what plays we're going to have next. As it is, we have Winnie the Pooh coming up this spring. We don't know what, if anything, we're doing in the fall for a major production. So, you know, I'll feel that we're really healthy when we've got that, you know, 18-month horizon and when we have uh, maybe a little stronger leadership team where more people can shoulder uh, parts of the burden. But, you know, we're making progress in that direction. That feels really good. We have some new, fresh blood that are getting things done, especially with the Junior Bards efforts. So, there we go. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you, Jim, for sharing about that. Um, the next program that we have listed is KCC TV. Darcy, if you'd like to come up and come from behind the camera. <laughs> behind the camera, yeah. Well, and, and Lois has it a, a bit pretty good in here. Was it Lois or Lois? Okay. Yeah, that that is what I what I do there. Everything listed, and it's pretty much from you know seven eight in the morning some days, and then all the way to seven. Well, what time were we here last night? Till till nine last night. Mm. You know, a couple hour breaks here and there, but yes, yeah, it's it's, a, it's not a job of of, of convenience at all. <laughs> you're, you're always, and, you know, and then some days I don't. I'll have maybe one thing to do, and then the rest of the day off. But um, in fact, I I gotta make it quick because I gotta run upstairs and switch over to live for the hockey game <laughs> that's gonna be starting pretty soon. Um, right. And yeah, and and it, I'm probably the. Easiest, hardest, easiest person to find, or the easiest, hardest person. You know, it. I'm, I'm out and around. If, if you ever can catch me, and you got any questions, or you got any ideas for, for things that come up, I love um, submissions. Those are great. They don't have to be anything fancy. If you happen to know musicians or, or the poets, or, or if you got a neighbor who makes some quirky little art things and. Hey, you want to sit down and talk to him? To get your cell phone out, take a little video, send it on over. Little submissions like that. Or if you want to get fancy, we have camera equipment, and it's pretty easy to. You can check it out. I'll give you a little tutorial. There we go. Yeah, that's that's my call to, to volunteerism. <laughs> <laughs> to submit some things. Yeah. So. Okay, and right. with that, I'm gonna. We'll send you I'll off. I'll be I'll be beeping <laughs> on, but this will this will keep recording. Okay. Um, and then the next program that we have is the Rainy Lake Community Orchestra. Joe, if you wanted to share about it. Well, I think most everything is, is printed in here. And, um, and one of the things that I was really happy with last year is that with the eight performances, number one, eight performances is, is quite a bit you know, for the orchestra to do in one calendar year. And four of them were in this building, which is also really great that we have a space to do that. Um, and as you know, when John Faith died in 2020, you know, the question on the orchestra's mind was, now what? <laughs> you know, because they were practicing in the dungeon downstairs here. They had a stable, and now being part of the Bacchus music program, we, can, we still have that stability. Um, the orchestra has rehearsals Monday evenings, um, which any of you string players are certainly welcome to join us. Um, but there have been orchestra members now that they come in other times during the week to rehearse. Um, because they're, they're that interested. The orchestra, I feel, is they've been rehearsing and performing uh, more difficult material they've become a stronger group musically, which is really nice to see. Uh, we started a sponsorship program. Most of the money that the orchestra raises is for the string camp in August. Um, this is an opportunity to raise funds for mo the more local expenses. So last year we were able to buy 24 new music stands. Um, the music stands that we had been using, uh, some of them said AB School on them. <laughs> some, a couple of them said Falls Elementary. Some of them were from, that they were stamped back as probably when I was in band. So we were able to get new music stands. Ooh. We got, I know. Um, we, got, uh, we got new folders. I mean, it sounds like a real little thing, but that's exciting. I mean, we could, we could get some new stuff and not just using hand-me-down after hand-me-down. Um, that shows growth. It shows progress. 
Um, does anybody have any questions? I mean, we're still practicing, and Tim. Have your Canadian members all returned now, Joe? Or we do that? have them, and we've been enticing more to come across. The, um, there is an orchestra in Fort Francis, so it's not a matter of being in competition with them, because members of this group played in that group as well. So it gave them just another musical opportunity in the communities. Mother? <laughs> <laughs> and that's in here too. There was a handbell choir that also started a little over a year ago, a community handbell. They perform a couple times a year. Um, that group started with uh, me trying to rope people into playing by saying, you know, we can come and play and we will learn four songs in four rehearsals and then perform four days later, which they did. Um, they also were excited enough that they wanted the group to maintain and keep going. So the group, it is a full uh, group. There are 11 people playing in that group, um, which is just the right size for the number of bells that we have. And, and I'm sure that if, if I had the time and wanted to create another offshoot group or maybe even get some <laughs> younger people involved, I think that there would be enough support as well. So. well. Anything else? <laughs> All right. All right, well, thank you, Joe. Um, Lois, did you want to share anything about the Bacchus Music, music Program? Yeah, I, okay. can, I can do that. Bacchus okay. Music has been a delightful surprise for us. We have an opportunity here. We have instruments. We have teachers who are teaching music lessons to young and old. Um, everything from ukulele. We had a quartet of ukulele players, and they composed their own song. They wrote it. They learned it together, and they have performed it. Um, it's really it's been fun to watch. We have little, little kids playing great big bass violins. It's really, it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's great to see the kids running up and down and just really enjoying coming to learn. Um, everything from piano to the stringed instruments. Um, I know Darcy has offered some banjo lessons, but it's just been, it's been a very successful program. In the future, we look to, um, we've been in conversation about having youth and adult choirs. Um, and we are also looking forward to Summer Arts Week in 2023. We did have summer arts scheduled for 2022, but because of the flooding and everybody's call to help with families and people to recover homes and sustain, um, we were not able to have summer arts this past year. A number of our teachers simply weren't available. But 2023 looks to be a promising year. I know, Jim, we've had conversations about things that we can do with the Bards, all the way, music, visual arts, all kinds of things. So we will be starting on Summer Arts 2023 very soon. Bacchus has a dedicated space on the third floor, not only for the Rainy Lake Community Orchestra, but also for the Bacchus Music Lessons. Any questions about Bacchus Music? Okay, then we'll let Lois take it away for the next two pages, 26 and 27. Oh, food. Um, a lot about it's all about food. It's all about so. food. Food is a very big thing here at Bacchus. It always, it has been since I came. You know, I came, I started in February and in March, COVID came. And so there have been a lot of changes to food programs and food has become much more prevalent here at, um, at Bacchus because people's needs in our communities have changed. Um, Ruby's pop-up pantry continues. Uh, they are taking a pause right now. They will resume again in March. Um, but they continue to do their food service outside, so people simply drive up and they, they donate for a share. They drive up, pop their trunk, and, and volunteers here from Bacchus put a very healthy share of food in their trunks um, or in the backs of their vehicles, and they go home. It's interesting, to date, Ruby's Pantry has given more than $35,000 to area charities through its benevolence <coughs> program. A percentage of every share that every donation for share goes to this benevolence fund and we give it to area um, organizations, other nonprofits and charities. The big thing for Ruby's this year, our Ruby's Pantry group 
recognized that they had to have some place to store all of their supplies, all their grocery carts, the freezer blankets, everything that they had, everything that they needed had been stored over in the Alexander Baker building. With the sale pending for that building, they had to do something. They had to have some place to put all of their things. Bacchus does not have storage space. So this group um, purchased a 20, 20 or 24, Ed, what is it? 20 foot or 24, 24 foot? 24 foot enclosed trailer. And they have that for mobile storage. At when Ruby starts, they pull it up, unload everything. And when Ruby's is done, they pull the trailer back, load everything up, and they take it off site. So it's working very well, and they're to be congratulated for that, for that effort. That um, trailer has just very recently been paid for. So we're happy about that. Bacchus Community Cafe continues to run strong. Um, last averages were about 200 meals every Tuesday and Thursday night. So it's still a very, um, very successful, very busy program. We have um, our staff and our, and our um, cooks and our crew work together very well. They, they really monitor the shopping that's available through different vendors. They purchase good products, but they're very mindful of their budget. There's a lot of home cooking going on back there. We have carrot peeling parties, um, all kinds of things. But they get that we're trying to buy more and more whole natural food, potatoes, carrots, cabbage, um, Alyssa talked to me today about zucchini and what? Cucumbers and, and mm. Yeah. So we really search to get some of that fresh food and keep our, our meals nutritious and healthy. Community Cafe also continues to be carry-out service. Um, summer food has been an interesting piece, and we are looking forward to having summer food again this summer, but we know that um, we have to do a few things differently. We're going to try to partner with the school system in their summer school and have um, work together so that we can all save and be more um, economical on our, on our summer food program. When the pandemic hit, if you look at the graphs down below, you'll see summer food and summer food community cafe. They all they went sky high in 2020. They just really grew. In 2021, we served 9,988 lunches to area children, and last year the number dropped down to 3,833. And the reason for that is that um, the Minnesota Department of Education deemed that we had to serve all of the lunches inside. They had to be dine-in only. We could not continue with the carry-out service. There were a number of parents that were really struggling with that because we have working parents that don't have time on their lunches. Run home, get the kids, bring them here, eat, and then get them back home and get to work. So we saw a significant decline in our numbers. However, we're going to, we're going to work with, the, um, with our contacts at Summer Food to see if there's anything that we can do to help those families um, and, and build our numbers back up. Regardless, we are happy to serve the number of children that we are. That's, so that's 3,833 fewer days, times that those kids went without lunch. So we were very happy about that. Their favorite is still taco in a bag. <laughs> I think it's the adult's favorite too. Yeah, I, I think so. It's also the most time consuming to put together, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, anything else, okay. Lois? No, nope, that's all that I had for that. Any questions about our food programs before we move on? Okay. So then the next um, few sections I'm just going to kind of highlight. Again, it's lists of very important names of people who have either given time or um, financial contributions, donations to our food programs. We have the Feed Just One program that um, I think we do annually. And it's still... It still kind of kind of goes throughout the year. So, um, again, thank these people if you see them, if you know them. Uh, it's very appreciated. It stays in the community. It helps your community members. It's, it's all stuff that we're really excited about. Um, and then we've got our membership page which includes everyone here, um, people that feel that Bacchus is something they want to be a part of, and so they commit every year to be a member. Um, if you have friends or family that aren't members, feel free to uh, 
pressure them a little bit to join. Um, no, the more the merrier, and um, really people give what they can to be members. We appreciate any interest or involvement really at any level within the community that we can get. Um, it's all really valuable just having all of those shared inputs and, and all of that. Um, the next page talks about contributions and donations. And, and then we have our seat sponsorships. Um, so just take a look over any of them. If you see any errors or anything missing or you want anything different in these reports, let us know. Um, otherwise, they're just here for your review. So um, that wraps up our booklet. Does anyone have any questions that came to mind after we talked about a topic or anything that anyone wants to go back to? Donna, anything? No, I think you covered the year pretty well. <laughs> yeah, it does cover the year. Um, the year goes fast when you look at it. Huh? Oh, Tim. Uh, could you tell us what the um, uh, contribution cost is for a lifetime sheet, a seat, or a multiple year seat, or an annual seat? Mm. A lifetime is 1,000. Multiple years is 500, and every year is 100. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Wah, for knowing that stuff. I'm going to do a little promo on the seat thing. Sure. It's really interesting to me. After we have shows and people come in and they see a concert or they're doing uh, or they watch a play or what have you, many times they'll, or if they just wander into the building just to say hello and find their locker, that happens a lot, um, they'll go into the auditorium and they'll look for their mom's seat or they'll look for their family member. And it's just really a cool connection to people. Um, it's, it's really been a very endearing thing to watch and to, to be able to offer to families. Okay. That wraps up our summary. Oh, Jim, yeah. I, I don't know that it should be in the annual report, but as I was listening to everything, and I'm, I'm a big Bacchus fan, I was also reminded of another major event in the history of Bacchus that isn't reflected in the annual report. And I'm referring to the public meeting that was held at the Rainy River Community College at which a lot of criticisms mm -hmm. were leveled at Bacchus. And while, you know, I don't endorse the package of what they did or their approach or anything like that, um, if there has been a public response by Bacchus, I'm not aware of it. Um, and I think some reference to that in, uh, in the record uh, would be appropriate. Um, regardless of what all they did, they raised some they burden, they have some heartfelt concerns, mm -hmm. independent of uh, fundamental legitimacy or what ought to happen or what their solutions were versus any other things. So that's something that might merit being touched on, touched on at this meeting or otherwise. I can I can field that question. Mm -hmm. That's very true. There were a lot of um, questions and points that were raised, Jim, and there were a lot of uh, there was a lot of listening that happened from our board's perspective. We all, you know, emotionally you, you react and you respond. But we caught our breath, sat down, and we thought, okay, what, what is it that they are saying? What are they telling us? And we listened, we evaluated. We did make some changes. Um, did we make a public statement? No, we did not. But we did extend open invitations to anyone um, to come to our board meetings. We have opened up the first minutes of our board meeting that anyone can come. They can ask questions. They can raise concerns. Um, we did make a public um, uh, opening availability to anyone who wanted to join our board to please step forward and do so. But to be honest, there has been no response to those things. So we are continuing to move forward, taking into account the things that were said, um, taking into account the recommendations that came, and doing our best to make change where change was needed. And we will continue to do that. The door is still open. The board table is still open to conversation or discussion, and anyone is welcome to come and meet with us and, and raise concerns or ask questions. Anyone on the board have anything more that you would like to add? Tim. We also created a, a board email site so they can express their concerns to board mm -hmm. members uh, without maybe going through management. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware of anything that's no. happened there. Um, Jim, you were at the meeting, I was at the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, my biggest problem with that was the way it was approached, and I think you said it just right. You know, everyone can have disagreements 
with what the board decides to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying the board makes all right decisions, but the way they approached it set everything off in such a negative tone uh, that it was unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions I asked at the meeting was, have they ever approached a Bacchus board member with these concerns? No. Have they ever come to a board meeting? No. Have they ever come to an annual meeting? No. And the fact is, I don't think any of them are members that were charged that started this. So it was very upsetting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we went through and discussed it. And, and like Willis said, I think we have made some changes because of it. Um, but it, it doesn't appear that, that they want to follow through with any dialogue at all mm -hmm. with us. It's unfortunate. It is. Mm -hmm. Jeff, I see you raising Yeah, I was at the meeting as well. I think you guys that were there, I, I was quite vocal about how I thought it was inappropriate how they handled themselves. It didn't seem very professional to me. Um, and, you know, uh, sort of felt ganged up and, and blindsided, at least in my estimation. So, you know, I think bottom line, at the end of the day, that meeting was, was, was laughable to me and, and just showed uh, unprofessionalism. And I'm so glad that whatever changes that you might have saw that were positive, you take those on. But you know, fight like hell for this place. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. And don't let them get you down, that's all I can say. Julie, did you have something? I just, I, I think you said it correctly in that we did make changes or we were listening. Um, we made some significant changes to the web page and to allow hopefully people to have more access or more information about Bacchus. Um, also the strategic planning that we're working on. You know, the, some of the issues and the points that were raised came up in, in those meetings. And while it's a process, you know, we are working on it. And again, we did make the choice not to publicly address it um, versus, you know, we, we didn't feel like that would necessarily um, be in anyone's best interest to go back and forth and kind of have a, you know, that type of a dialogue, especially considering the way it started. I think I took, um, I think as Tim has mentioned, it was hard to not react incredibly defensively to that. Um, and so I chose to see that as an opportunity for the board to grow. I took it very seriously that we were explained as inaccessible um, and really pushed for the email access, the public forum in our meetings, trying to utilize, I think we did a couple newspaper ads to, hey, if you wanna be involved, join us, <laughs> you know, please, um, to try to reach out to the community. And, and I found a lot of, um, fulfillment from seeing it as an opportunity. I think we grew a lot as a board. I think that we learned a lot and um, are continually trying to hold the decisions that we make accountable. Did we learn from this and are we taking positive steps as a result? So that's what I got from it. Um, and I feel that we've all made that a priority <coughs> through our meetings and discussions. So. It sounds like a very healthy response to a challenging situation, uh, and I certainly prefer more engagement and openness. Yeah. So that's so it. That's where we're. That's our hope, and by all means, please tell us if it did not come across that way. Um, we really aim to be approachable and reachable, and we want to hear about the concerns and the things that people don't understand or don't agree with. We want to hear about that, but you know, we want it to be in a positive space um, where we can do good work instead of just kind of having it slammed at us in a document that we see less than 24 hours in advance, you know, that kind of stuff. So there's positive ways to, to address challenges, and I think that's what we learned a lot from this. So mm -hmm. We have. We have. I think the board and staff, everyone is stronger for what we went through, and we look at things through different eyes today. We look at things differently. Um, maybe a bit more objectively. Um, it, it, sometimes you have to shake up a little bit to see and to think differently and more creatively, and this board has certainly done that. So uh, I just, I thank the board and all of the staff and our community for the support that we received during that time. 
any other? My mind having tossed out that thing, I think it was a good discussion anyway. So. Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. too. And any, Tim, I think oh. even just between the Bards and Bacchus, there mm -hmm. has been good growth. Um, sure. That was a great exercise for us as well, to, to look at the programs and what can we do and how can we better partner so that everyone can grow and look what's happening. It's, it's just, it's wonderful what's going on with the, the boards, the BARDS and the junior BARDS mm -hmm. programs. It's good. It's good. Excellent. Okay. Any other comments, feedback? Okay to move on. If there is, we'll go back. No, no worries. Um, so we'll move on to the next item of old business. Um, I think if we can add to like the minutes that we did have this discussion about the public forum, just so that's reflected. Um, and then the other item is the AB project, which we have, I don't think I, Isaac. You know, no, I don't think Isaac has joined us. Um, so we'll have Lois to uh, Tracy, yeah. uh, perhaps Lois or a couple of board members could comment. Uh, we've talked about the AB project, but I think maybe we need to talk just a little bit so people are aware of what's going on with our boiler system oh, yes. in Bacchus. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things that I have on my list yeah, yeah. when I thought about, okay, well, what haven't we talked about in the other programs or in the other discussions? And one is the boiler. Um, this year, the way that everything worked out with availability and demand of product and, and services um, and with the delay in the sale of the Alexander Baker building, we are heating our building for one last year with the old boiler system, that old 1912 boiler is purring like a kitten it brings a little leak here and there or it does something kind of funny and we just keep praying that you know we got to get through may we just have to get through may um, but it is it is working well it's just as loud and thundering and proud as it ever was um, but we do have two brand new boilers sitting in the basement they were delivered in november and um, I'm, very, I'm very pleased that they are here. Um, they were ordered and, and procured through Shannon's and they will be doing the install. Um, I'm, I'm also gonna just throw it out that they are an American made product. I'm real <laughs> happy yeah. about that. And they're about a quarter of the size of yes. what the old boilers are. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. yeah, somebody, one of the guys from Shannon's looked at them and said you could stuff both of those into one of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's really crazy, but you know, the, um, the fuel savings that we expect to see from these boilers should help us to reset our budget significantly. So we're looking forward to that. Um, one of the other projects that we have underway that we're going to have to make some changes because of the AB project is our transformer. We have an indoor transformer in this building and it is, um, we're working to get that transformer located outdoors. Um, there is an easement in the, with the Alexander Baker team that the transformer will be located outside where the dumpsters in that area where they sit right now. Um, so we will be um, having our transformer outside. We're looking at the electrical service that we have coming into our panels right now. Our, the panels that are downstairs, it's very interesting. They were designed and built so that the electricity would come into this building and it would feed Alexander Baker, Forest Land, and Bacchus. So we're trying to chase down all that wiring to find out, okay, it says kiln, but we don't have a kiln anymore. Where was it? So we're looking at where all of those services are and if those services are still live and if they are still needed. Um, and once all of that has been completed, then the transformer will be hooked up too. So we are working on that. We are partnering with an electrical engineer from the Alexander <coughs> Baker project. We thought it made a lot of sense that there would be continuity and quality if we both use the same. We do have an electrical engineer who is um, donating some service just to review contracts and to make sure that the best things for Bacchus are ultimately happening and that we're not getting something that we don't need. So we're very grateful for that second set of eyes. Um, clean out and preparing for construction continues here in our building. Um, it, we're always cleaning out and getting ready. Um, and we also have done a lot of careful analysis on the placement of our boilers um, for access and maintenance in the future uh, for both Alexander Baker and for us because there will be one path to get through from Bacchus into AB and it is for the sole purpose of the boiler area that we simply need to have a passageway there so that they can get into their boiler room. Um, so we just need to make sure that our space is designed so that they can safely do that. 
I think that's all that I had on that, other than our March newsletter will be centered specifically on the Alexander Baker building and what's happening there, so that we can help the public to understand that Bacchus is still going to be here when there are apartments over there. I just wanted to add that it was really important for the Bacchus board to um, purchase that boiler locally and use local contractors for installation, and, and we've accomplished that, so mm -hmm. that was a big thing for us. That's a good point, Patty, and I will also promote that Shannon's has been incredibly good to us, both with ordering, helping us to design, answering a lot of questions, and working out so that we can pay them when the sale of the building is complete. But they have been so very good. So um, just a shout out to Shannon's. Okay, any other? <laughs> Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, <laughs> that's a lot. I know more about it's not this it. than that's I ever thought I would. <laughs> um, any other old business items that people want to add or reflections from the previous year? Tracy. Yeah? Um, I would like to have a reminder that um, for the newsletter, if we can be going yeah. to an email format, yeah. if we can have everybody's email for mm -hmm. that, that would be very helpful. Yes. Yes, thank you, Donna. Um, if you're interested in getting the newsletter by email, let any of us know. You can give us your email address and we will make sure you get on that list. That is not required. If you prefer to get it by mail, that is fine too. It's just an option that we are um, making available to s if people are interested. So, and then, yep, but good. Also, I think Lois is coordinated extensive planning where the grounds outside which you would call a parking lot mm -hmm. be all revamped and it sounds like it, uh, with green spaces and parking is always a big thing it and is. it sounds like it's going to be met. It is. We do have some parking challenges. Once the Alexander Baker building is sold, all of the parking out front will become Alexander Baker. It will be for their apartments only. We will not have access to that. Last year, we did make a purchase from the county. We bought 25 feet to the west of our building, that, and it goes between 5th and 3rd all the way out so that we will have additional parking, and our plan is to stripe that so that we can control and regulate, get maximize that parking. Um, I have had conversations with folks over at the county here at the Forestland building about making traffic through here one way so that we can eliminate some congestion and promote safety. Um, but we will have to look at additional parking and how we're going to do that. We have some options available. Some of it is going to come with community support, I hope. Um, and that would be that people could park in some of our city lots downtown and we could have a bus service when we have a large event, a bus service to bring people here, drop them off at the front door, they can come inside. When the event is over, they go back out, get on a nice warm bus and go to their car. So we're working on all kinds of possibilities for people. We just have to introduce them and introduce change to people effectively. Have there been any concerns raised by the residential neighbors around? Because it seems some of the, inevitably, some parking is going to spill over into mm -hmm. the residential area where it wasn't before during events. Not where parking is concerned, no. There, there are concerns that are voiced about having apartments and they want to make sure that it appears a certain way, that it's maintained and that all of that happens. But as far as the parking is concerned, no. There have not been any concerns raised. Not yet. Uh, with time, I think as people realize maybe the volume of it or mm -hmm. it'll change. Mm -hmm. but. Okay, moving on to new business. We don't have anything listed on the agenda, but any items that want to be put forth for new business? Going once. No, I won't, I won't do it again. Um, with that, if there is not anything else. Oh, oh. Door prizes. Okay, we do have a new business item. How could item. you forget, Tracy? <laughs> That's the only reason why I came. Yeah. That's the only reason Greg came. <laughs> uh, someone else can do this next year. <laughs> All right, Steve, I'm going to have you draw a name, please. We have 
um, two lovely house plants and some <coughs> chocolates. And uh, the first name drawn is Ann Holden. So you will get your first choice, please. Hey. 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 Jim, would you like to? Do you want it delivered to you? Which would you? Um, pressure. Which one? Whatever, whatever you want to give me. I can't handle that kind of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> The next name drawn is Alan Burchill. Oh, Yeah, these two. So, right, well, there's three? Yeah, yeah so they're likely to kill that. So I'll put this. Okay. <laughs> You can have whichever whichever one oh, you think you have the best luck with. <laughs> We'd also like to invite you all if you stay and you'd like to have cookies. We have cookies, coffee, and we have bottled water in the cooler, so you're very welcome to do so. Okay. Well, with that, we will. Um, I'll run this. Who's the third one? Carol. Carol. <laughs> All right. So now that the prizes are distributed, um, on behalf of the building, the board, our staff, I just want to thank you for coming, for showing interest, for taking the time. Um, it means, there's no words to say what it means, it's, it's just appreciated without measure. Um, so with that, we will adjourn our annual meeting at 7.05, if that's an important detail. Got it. Um, hmm? Oh, no, we need a motion to adjourn. Oh, so moved. All right, so we've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Was that your Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Thanks, everyone.